Hey guys, a quick tutorial on how to add chord diagrams or anything you want to a video. This uh, answers the question, how do we make those play along videos that have chords? So I've got a video clip here. I shot this in front of a green screen, obviously. Uh, this is a little song that I wrote. I'll play a little sample. You find yourself wondering what to do. I've got some advice for so this is a very simple song I'm going to start off with, but I want to point out over here in this window, I've created a project called Play Ukulele right here. And I've got assets, which are my chord diagrams. And I know it's kind of hard to see these, but I've these are ping files, PNG. I've dragged these in. These are all set and ready to go um, in terms of placement. So I want to show you this real quick. Let's grab a G7 chord over here. Just going to drag this and drag it onto my timeline. And wow. Okay. So this is what it looks like in the picture. And I've already formatted these so I don't have to drag them. In other words, I created a graphic image that's this big, as big as the whole video. And then I placed this image here and I made the background transparent. So these, this makes it very quick and easy. I used Photoshop and I created layers and I kept my fret diagram I fret here I kept that the same and then I kept all these dots I just moved the dots around then I would change the font up here and I generate all these ping files so if I drag another one in uh, it's it it puts it exactly in the same place all right sorry for the background noise I could turn this off and get rid of that so that's all set up so I don't have to do too much in terms of placement um, that being said I could grab this uh, image somehow. Let me see. I can grab this image and I could move it around if I wanted to place it over here. I could certainly do that. If I wanted to make it bigger or smaller, I could do that as well. My computer is being a little sticky at the moment, but I'm not going to do any of those things. So I'm going to put that back. All right. So let me show you what I, how I like to start off. And I've got this in green screen, but I want to work with the chords right now. Later on, I can uh, do the whole green screen. I could mask this, uh, my uh, furry covered shotgun mic here. I'll need to create an image mask and, or a four point mask and get rid of that. But that's easy to do. Right now, we're going to focus on placing the chords. So what I do is I play. Let's go back to hitting that so I can scrub the audio. I play the file. And as I listen, I go through and I put down markers. And if I go up here to Mark menu and go to Markers, you'll see Add Marker right here as I just have to press the letter M. All right, so I press the letter M as the video is playing, and that way I know exactly where to put the chords. This makes life much, much, much easier when you're placing your chord diagrams. So I'm going to play this video, and I think there's three, just three chords in this opening passage. I'm going to press the letter M when I get to each chord, and uh, then I'll have my markers in place. If you ever find yourself wondering what to do, I've got some advice for you. You pick up your uke and you get it in tune and you play your ukulele. All right, that's it. So I've got three markers, two chords. The first chord is C. I'm just going to plop this down there. And look, it snaps right to that marker because I've got it. I've got snapping on. I'm not going to worry about length right now. I'm just going to put the chords in. I'm going to grab my G7 chord, drop that down. And the last chord is also C. I can either go up here and grab the C from here, or I can just do what I like to do and press Option, Option, and drag this sucker down there. So that just creates a copy. And that's it. And then I'm going to drag the lengths. I can snap that or I can leave a little break. Sometimes leaving sometimes leaving a little break um, shows it brings more attention to the fact that the chord's changing. So let's look at both ways. So here's what I have right now. If you ever find yourself wondering what to do, I've got some advice for you. You pick up your uke and you get it in tune and you play your ukulele. Hey guys. Now, something you can do if you want, and I've done this in the past, is you can scoot these up just about a beat. 
And if you put them before the downbeat, sometimes that's helpful for people so they see it right before they have to make the change. It's up to you, it's just another way of doing it. Wondering what to do. I've got some. You see that one? So it just changes right before, maybe gives people a split second <laughs> head start to change that chord. Wondering what to do. I Something you can also do, and this would be a little bit more advanced, and I've done this on some videos, is you can put another, you can put your chord in there. What, bear with me for a second while I do this. I'm gonna, I got a, a G7, I'm gonna shrink this down. And what I've done is I sometimes will put the next chord Maybe you can put it up here. Actually, there's a little more room. However you want to do it is fine. But that could be the next chord. And I like that. I've actually gotten some comments or uh, some compliments on this particular method. I'm going to do the same thing. Watch this. I'm going to grab this G7. Watch. Select the G7. Go up to Copy. And then when I select this one, the C, I want to have it look the same as the G7. I'm going to paste attributes. And you know what that's going to do is it's going to do all this stuff, all the scaling. And when I paste that, boom. Now I don't have to approximate the change. Why am I shrugging? I don't know. I don't have to approximate the change from this chord to this chord. I, I know if I cut and paste the attributes... It's going to copy and paste all that, the repositioning and resizing and everything. So you can add some text here, next chord, if you want. Um, I think it's kind of a nice way to do it. It's up to you, though. If you want to make it really simple, you don't have to add the next chord. If you ever find yourself wondering what to do, I've got some advice for you. Which is to keep it simple. All right, this looks like it's almost done. All I would need to do is go in here. I can... Um, Go to my keying and, oh, I can go to basics. I've got one that I call super key. Let's see what super key looks like. Hey, looks pretty good. All right, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that aspect. Maybe I'll just really quickly uh, grab a, cause I love to finish the audio off with a final plug. Just, just for, you know, my own satisfaction of getting the audio, even though this isn't so much about audio. I like to use a preset in this final, final plug called uh, DVD Mastering. And that just pumped up the audio big time over here. So here's what it sounds like. If you ever find yourself wondering what... You know what? I'm going to extend this because we want to see the first chord. If you ever find yourself wondering what to do I've got some advice for you. You pick up your uke and you get it in tune and you play your ukulele. Hey. All right. Um, I have a little clipping over here. Not to worry. I can lower this a little bit and take care of that. All right. So that's basically all you're going to do. And as the chords get more intense, uh, you just keep adding your markers. And um, once you've done, once you're done adding all your markers to where the chords go, then you just go back and grab the chords, throw them on the timeline. Um, I recommend using PNG files rather than um, GIF or JPEGs because GIFs and JPEGs, well, GIFs, GIFs or GIFs can be transparent, but you want to use something with a transparent background, ideally. Otherwise, you're going to have to use a mask to trim around your chord diagram so that you can lay it on top of your video and it won't cover the whole video. Hope that makes sense. Usually most of these modern day video editing uh, software programs, this is Final Cut Pro X, uh, most of these are going to just treat a graphic, um, you know, if it's rectangular, if it's square, if it's round, it's, it'll go in there that way. But I like to use pings because they have transparency and um, they're good quality. So export your graphics as pings if you want. Also, if you guys want these chord diagrams, let me know and I'll email them to you or I can post them on the website. You guys can grab them and use them. All right. Thanks for watching. See you guys soon.